So this, uh, obviously 2020 is a big year for us and um, it's been two years in the building actually. And so um, the way that these fixtures normally work is you, you get a very narrow opportunity to influence it. Um, you get a couple of requests each year, but we've been pretty, uh, pretty full on in what we've looked to achieve. And uh, in the end, we're, we're, we're pretty pleased with it. Um, I guess the first, the first thing I'd say is in the Marsh series, you know, the, the game in Wyala is really significant to us and uh, we're, we're pleased to be able to make that happen. Um, in the main fixture, um, the, the things that stand out to us are the, the six Friday night and Saturday night games at home, uh, which uh, uh, are significant in their own right. But when you add that to the agenda that we've got for the 150th, um, that they're really helpful. Um, it sort of turns it into a pretty big fixture for us with, you know, in, in big time slots. The other thing we asked the AFL was, we wanted to get the year off to a big start. And uh, if you have a look at the way that it's set up, we've got that, that first home showdown in round two. You know, we'll be wearing the prison bars and we think that's a, uh, it's a fantastic opening for us um, for the 150th year. We go into Good Friday against West Coast, another big, big Friday night game. Um, we have uh, we didn't lose the Anzac Day game. Yeah, we've done that for 15 or 16 years in a row now. So it's uh, again when you when you're asking for multiple things, um, these things come on and off the table. So we're really pleased that uh, we're able to play the Bulldogs there and. Again on a, on a Saturday night on Anzac Day, which will be a, a special a special event, and then we've got the birthday game. We'll be wearing our birthday Guernsey. Um, that'll be against Carlton. So, uh, and then we've got the, the Lions, um, which uh, which all happened before we go to Shanghai, and the Lions gives us a chance to to celebrate the 2004 Premiership. So, if you have a look at the start of the season, you know we've got four or five blockbuster opportunities. Um, to reinforce the 150th. So um, from a commercial and a membership point of view, we're really pleased with it. Um, as I said, the AFL have worked very hard to accommodate um, so, some of our really important requests and uh, to kick it off with the prison bars in round two is um, pretty significant. I'll throw it to Chris um, from a, to <coughs> talk to, a, to the, the fixture about that, from a competitive point of view. Yeah, obviously, for, from our side of things, uh, you know, the AFL have been able to minimise the number of um, six-day breaks we have. We've got no five-day breaks. Um, you know, our travel schedule is, you know, we, we go all around Australia and obviously over to China, but we think that's, you know, more than reasonable. Um, I know that there's a lot more um, scrutiny on the the, uh, the games where you have the double-ups against the, um, you know, the, the second, well, sorry, the playing the team the second time. So, um, you know, again, we're, we're comfortable um, where that sits from an AFL perspective. So at our end, we're happy that the club is is pleased from a commercial standpoint and will enter the year looking to uh, looking to progress. When you say you had a couple of requests this year, was there anything that you didn't <clears> that you really wanted? Obviously that big, big start to the round you got, but... Yeah, we, we, we spent a lot of time talking about um, could we, could we, round one, you know, like we'd like, we'd like that showdown round one, but um, for it to be um, our first home game on Channel 7, you know, the, you know, the, the national broadcaster um, on a Saturday night is, is as, as good as we could really hope for, I think. It's, it's terrific. So to answer your question, no, I, I, think, we, I think we've done really well, you know, from, from that point of view. You just run us through the games again. Um, so it was the prison bars in round two. Round two, we'll pl where, where the um, you know the the first Guernsey that we ever wore um, was the, the the blue blue hoops. Um, we'll play we'll wear that in our birthday game. That'll be against Carlton, um, which is uh, in May 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 the second, um, and. Uh, you know, we'll probably there'll be an indigenous Guernsey that we'll wear as well, but um, they're, they're the two big moments. Um, the other one, which is, uh, you, know, you know, I think the AFL is becoming increasingly confident about is the Good Friday game. Um, you know, we played in Perth last year. It'll be really interesting to see how that goes here in Adelaide. I, I, I suspect it'll be a, a, a really popular 
fixture, um, and we're you know, very pleased to be playing it. Kim, how big is that for the footy club? The first AFL game, you know, like a good fight. Yeah, it's a, I think it's a, it's it's certainly um, big big for us. Um, we're, we're 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 very interested to see how it goes. I I I think that all all indications are that it'll be a you know a really significant event, and uh, we'll we'll pay um, due respect to the day and. Uh, um, but I, I think that our fans will, will really enjoy it. Did you, request, them also, did you request that? Uh, no, no, we didn't. That wasn't part of the request, but we, we were part of that fixture last year in Perth, so uh, that that really just has complemented the rest of it. Do you expect any kickback from the sample? Obviously, they've made good fight over their own day. Yeah. Maybe religious groups over, over <clears> the first game. Uh, look, I, th I think that there's been a, there's been enough precedent now to for people to understand that you know this is this is now becoming increasingly part of the uh, you know, of the day, and uh, you know I, I guess there will always be people who have different different views, and and uh, and we, we respect that, and uh, and and it's important that we 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 treat the day the right way. But um, I, I think it's I think it's here to stay. I think that um, you know, the the AFL and and the other in the SNFL are seeing enough to be in, encouraged by it. Apart from your great win in the corresponding fixture in Perth last year, was it received well over there, the Good Friday game? Yeah, no, I, I think it was. Um, yeah, again, th th there is that conversation that goes on, but uh, the AFL feedback to us was overwhelmingly that it was it was positive and, uh, uh, you know, I think people have the right to choose and um, how they how, how they celebrate that day or commemorate that day um, and uh, for the, the football fans who are choosing to, to to attend a game that's that's their choice did you say the blue and white games is going to be used against carlton the carlton are there any concerns about the color clash there? Like no it's really light blue it's pale yeah so oh. it shouldn't be a problem what sort of crazy thing you'll get for that good friday game hard, hard to say but um you know it's uh it's a good game. <laughs> like we've, we've had some, we've, we've had some crackers against the West Coast. Uh, you know, I, I would be expecting, you know, um, 40, 40 plus um, as a minimum. I would have thought. Would you like more? Sorry. The, the Thursday and Friday game seem to be the ones that everyone talks about when Christie comes out. Would you like to be more involved with that, or is that <coughs> overrated in your eyes? No, it's not overrated. I, I think that uh, Thursday is an interesting. Um, an interesting slot, and uh, and it always gives you good profile. But we were feeling a bit greedy. You know, we'd we'd actually asked a lot. You know, and we didn't. We weren't. We weren't speaking about Thursday nights. Um, the second showdown is that on a Sunday, on its own. So no other games that day. Is that right? Yeah, th that's my understanding. Um, which which is interesting. Um, and again, you know, there's been a lot of talk about um, how, how might we elevate. Um, the significance of those showdowns, and, and you know, we we as South Australians, are, are, you know, acutely aware of how important they are and how good a spectacle spectacle they are. And um, both on both occasions this year, there'll be an opportunity, you know, to um, to elevate that game. I think, which I, I think is a good thing. Is that the standalone showdown that you think it deserves? So, I mean, it is no, no. It's only, it's the only AFL game on the day, but it is on Sunday. It is on a Sunday, and, and, and no, I, I, I think that the, uh, the the Saturday night um, round two game is, uh, you know, elevates it on Channel Seven, elevates it to the national stage uh, really, really well, and uh, you know we'll keep pushing for uh, it to be you know, sort of regarded as highly as we regard it on the national stage. So did you feedback ask for that? From fan, in your feedback from fans, what do they tell you they want to see the most of? I mean, are they disappointed there's no Thursday matches or are they like Saturday night? What are, what are they telling you? Uh, yeah, historically it's been, um, they love the Friday night and Saturday night games. They're the, they're the two big ones. Uh, Saturday Twilight is, is also good. Thursday's a bit of a, a, a relatively new proposition um, and fantastic from a television point of view. A little harder to, to, to attend. Um, so, um, but I, th I think that's uh, clearly the AFL is deciding that this is a, a slot that needs to be invested in and uh, you know, maybe we'll be in it down the track. But uh, w what's valuable is that they are generally standalone games and uh, you get that national profile. So uh, China in round eleven. You're pleased with how that's turned out? Yeah, no, we we uh, we are really pleased because that 
yeah, that's a we, we, we put, sort of roll through the Shanghai game, but that, that's a really big ask um, each year, and um, yeah, we're pleased that St Kilda are, uh, are going back for the second second time. You know, all of the advance travel arrangements and sales are looking really positive. Um, there's good corporate support, so we, we, you know, we, we thought that last year went uh, as an event went forward again. It was the, the third you know, third time that we'd played there. Um, we were a little bit you know, concerned about the crowd, you know, like uh, in that, again, we, 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 we have difficulty getting the Chinese audience out of the tents and into, into, into the stands. Um, so we're, we're working on that, but um, you know, that's, a, that's a good slot for us. That the, the weather in Shanghai means that the, there's a very narrow window of opportunity and uh, that late May heading into the buy is perfect for us and so longer do you think you'll continue with the Shanghai venture if it if it turns out the same roughly the same again this next year? Uh, well I, look I, I think that the AFL has uh, showed um, yeah, a real appetite for it yeah they, they've locked in for uh, this year and another year um, with, with St Kilda um, we, our partner is, is locked in for five years we, we see it as a long a long-term play um, we, we see it as highly successful we, we'll be profitable in China this year um, and we'd expect the same next year. So the China engagement um, strategy is re working really well for us. The game is one part of that. Um, and, and, and we think it's a, we think it's an interesting and compelling um, part of the fixture. So, okay, the so Bruce Bird, sorry, John. So there's a, from a football <coughs> perspective, do your eyes, when the fixture come out, just go straight away to who you're playing twice? Is that sort of the most relevant football aspect of the fixture? Uh, we, we look at a number of things. I mean, travel is obviously an important one where, you, where you're actually going throughout the year, but there's no doubt that you, you turn your attention to who you're playing twice. And, um, you yeah, know, you do that really just to get a, a, an initial look because uh, history would suggest that, uh, that those teams who ended down the bottom last year are probably going to get better. Um, so you don't do it with any other... Uh, inclination than to to just say that you you want to see who it is that you are playing twice. That was the next question. Is there anything that's relevant? At all about oh, I mean, I think there, there is some relevance in in the sense that if a team is having a really bad year and you get to play them twice, well, that's clearly an advantage. Than uh, you know, if if that's not the case, but uh, I don't think that anyone right now would would be game enough to suggest that you know one team in the comp is going to have you know a really bad year. That the competition is is a really tight competition. Um, uh, so yeah, we, we, we have a quick look, but uh, not too in depth. Keith, you said that the Brisbane game could be a celebration of your 2004 premiership. Not yes, that, yeah. Involved. Well, when you think about the 150-year umbrella, all of those big moments are, are relevant. Um, and uh, again, it, it, because where it's situated in the in the fixture, where it's part of that first bank of games, it gives you an opportunity to just keep rolling with the theme and uh, you, know, you don't want to overdo it but uh, a, a point to that moment which is probably the most significant of, you know, achievement from this, this club in its 150 years makes a lot of sense I think so um, we'll work out how we do that but I, I think it sets itself up pretty well. Sam Gray, can you tell us from your end someone who a lot of people you know, think may deserve to hang around how has it all played out from Portsmouth? Yeah, well, obviously we, we, we got to a point today where uh, it's the AFL list lodgement number one and so, um, you know, Sam uh, and the club haven't uh, been able to agree to terms and so um, we're at the point now where it's it's best that, you know, Sam looks uh, elsewhere for his footy career. You know, he's a, he's a guy who has come through our junior program, um, obviously, you know, played uh, a significant amount of footy at SNFL level before getting the opportunity to be drafted onto the rookie list at the time and then on to playing, you know, games at, uh, you know, a significant number of games at AFL level. So, you know, it's not the type of decision that's taken easily, certainly, you know, not in Sam ca Sam's case because he's been a, a great contributor to the club. But um, yeah, we're at a position now where we think we've got um, significant depth in that type of role um, at the club. Um, yeah, Sam was looking for some extra security that we weren't able to give. Yeah, that's what I was going to ask, because from the outsider's perspective, it's like he's performed at a reasonable level for a number of years. Could you just not 
come to an agreement on how long he wanted to stay? Yeah, I mean, the, fiscal or, or a role. For well, the, well, list management decisions take in all of those things. Um, yeah, we've also, as I say, we've got significant significant depth in the group of players that we think that can come through, and we've actually got to give some of those guys an opportunity f in order for the team to get better as well. I mean, that's an important point here is to say that yeah, we want to aim higher than what we've been and uh, and we need to get some players into that team who you know, we think have got um, the talent to take us to those positions. So if you start to think about you know, um, Butters playing next year and um, and Kane Farrell, you know, Jake Patmore coming back from injury, we've got to make sure that they've got spots to, to come into at AFL level because you know, if, if they're held at SNFL level for too long, they become SNFL type players and that's you know, what we you know, need to make sure it doesn't happen. We've got to give those spots to some, some guys who we think have got the talent to not only perform now, but also the talent to be really good players for us into the future. Has the club taken a more ruthless approach to <coughs> these sort of things in recent years? It seems like every year there's one who's in a similar boat who's you know, around the mark, but just gets pushed out. Yeah, I think it's the reality of the competition. It's, you know, we're, we're obviously um, you know, looking here from the two Adelaide teams, but this happens across the competition. It's not something new, but... Um, there's no doubt that, that we've wanted to make some decisions in order to take the club forward. So uh, if, if you want to you know, brand that ruthless, well, so be it. But um, we just know that we've got to make some decisions in order to get better, and that's our aim. Okay. Just the prison bars, are you that, where that um, in the second showdown is all just No, just the first one, yes. I'll ask one more. Have you guys made a decision whether or not we'll go co captains again next year? I know it gets asked all the time. We have made the decision. The normal process will apply. We, the, you know, the players will come back, they'll, they'll get into training, and, and we would imagine at some point in post Christmas that the, the leadership model will be discussed and uh, through, the, through the standard process. Have you got an inkling, Keith? We spoke to Tom. Couple days ago, and he said, I no, no, I, I wouldn't happen again. Yeah, no, I've, I've been listening to Tom, and uh, and I heard Westy speak about it, and uh, you know, that would be consistent with what the way that we we saw it was that uh, the guys, you know, Ollie and Tom embraced it well, and as young leaders, and and we were really pleased with the connection of the group last year. So uh, that didn't surprise me at all that you know, they were you know, they were feeling good about it. Um, but you know, we were, uh, as I say, these things are considered every year, and um, we'll just go through that process.